to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Caitlin. This is my dog, Zorro, and this channel is all about Zorro, or just about dog things in general. Uh, today I wanted to talk about things that we can do on rainy days or on days that for whatever reason we just can't get our dogs outside and we want to keep them stimulated and out of trouble. If you like this video, hit the like button below. Also consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when we make new videos. So of course there is the you know normal tug of war and fetch that we can play around the house with our dogs. But today I also want to talk about ways that we can mentally stimulate our dogs. Mental stimulation is just as important as physical stimulation with our dogs. A lot of people I hear them talking about, you know, my dog has all this energy and, you know, she's destructive even though she's getting hours of exercise and I'm taking her running and, you know, get, getting all this physical energy out. Um, a lot of times that's because they're lacking uh, mental stimulation. I know a lot of my subscribers have cattle dogs like me um, and they talk all about you know make sure if you get this dog they get all this exercise um, especially with working dogs or really intelligent dogs they need that mental stimulation um, even more because they're just easily bored because they're so smart. So here are some ways that we can um, somewhat exercise our dog but also just tire them out uh, by mentally stimulating their brain. The first one I use is hide and seek. Um, this is a great way that you can get your dog to use its um, problem solving skills, its good nose work. It's a good way to reinforce its recall. And um, the way that, there's two ways that you can do it. The way that I do it is by um, hiding treats around the house and kind of having my dog go ahead and try to find the treats. So I'll take him into my bedroom with my treats in hand so that he sees, you know, I'm about to do something with the treats and I'll sit him down in the bedroom, tell him sit and stay, and then I'll leave the room, come into the living room, hide the treats around the living room, of course, um, not out of reach or too difficult to find, something that's attainable for him. And then um, when I'm done hiding them, I will go back into the room and I'll let him know his, uh, you know, command that lets him know that he's okay. For us, it's just okay uh, to come out. And then I tell him, go, go find your treats. And he'll start sniffing around and looking for the treats. And eventually, you know, he finds those rewards. Um, so that's one way you can do it. And of course, the other way you can play is the obvious, um, you know, hide yourself. And that obviously works better if you have a bigger house. For us, we don't have a very big house, so uh, definitely hiding the treats is a lot more stimulating for him, personally for us. Uh, but the recall practice is great um, when it's you hiding yourself and you're having your dog find you. By the way, guys, that's Stella eating in the background. If you can hear that crunching, uh, it's just my cat eating her dinner. So another game like this that you can play with your dog is the shell game, which is a game where basically you take a treat or a scented item and you place it under a cup or other covering item um, and then you take another couple cups that are empty that don't have anything underneath and you kind of move them around um, in front of your dog and you allow your dog in the end to figure out which cup or covered item um, the treat is under and if you're unsure how to teach your dog how to play this I am gonna link a video below that you guys can use it's not a video that I made myself um, there's already a bunch of videos out there teaching your dog how to play this game so I'm just gonna link the one that I found to be the most useful down below uh, if you want to figure out how to help your dog to understand that game a little bit more Another one that is a little bit more obvious is um, chew toys, bones, stuffable dog toys. Um, this is, uh, if you've heard of Kongs, this is kind of like the Kong, you know, you can stuff a treat. Some people put peanut butter in it, some people, some, I personally put uh, coconut oil sometimes in it. Um, and this will preoccupy your dog for a good amount of time if you want to entertain them. Uh, but also do something at the same time. You should always have supervision with bones or chew toys and stuff like this, but um, you can at least be on your laptop um, or doing something else uh, if you have chew toys like this 
laying around. Another thing is you can have what's called a puzzle toy. I don't personally use this. Uh, with Zorro, I used to have like a slow feeding maze bowl, but some people do this who have fast eaters. Um, they get, it's, it's kind of like a toy that dispenses food out um, as your dog moves it around and they figure out how to move it around in the best way to get the food to dispense out. So that's good for good eaters and it also preoccupies them a little bit of the time and helps those problem solving skills. Of course we all know that our dogs get bored with their toys, you know, and sometimes a bone or chew toy isn't going to keep them preoccupied because they've been, you've given them this bone or chew toy so many times and they're over it and they don't want to play with it. Um, so one thing that I've found to be really helpful with that is to rotate toys out. So recently I just gave Zorro a bunch of toys for Christmas and I actually, I let him play with them all day. But at the end of the day, I took like half of those toys, put them away, and I'll be reintroducing them to him in the coming days or weeks as he gets bored with the toys that he's currently um, obsessed with playing with, which by, of course right now after I just pulled that Kong out, he is going to his basket and trying to get me to throw his toy right now. Um, but yeah, so I'll reintroduce them, and that's a great way to kind of... Um, keep your dog from getting bored with their toys and moving on to your shoes or your baseboards or whatever else and making sure they just always have an exciting item that is specifically for them. One of the biggest ones you can do with your dogs is training. Uh, training, training, training. Our dogs never have to stop learning, um, whether that be obedience training, teaching them tricks, agility. Um, even chores, especially with, you know, working dog breeds, they love jobs. So you can teach them to fetch your newspaper, teach them to put their toys away. I mean, that's fulfilling to them too, just to be able to um, do something for you. Uh, but basically, that's, that's going to help stimulate their brain. Obviously, you know, when we learn something new, we get tired out when you're intensely focused on something or when we're in a class uh, for a long time, that tires us out. So it's the same for them. You know, when they learn something new, they get tired out too. Um, so you can teach them something new like that, or you can even just, you know, go through some of the stuff that they already know and just reinforce those commands with them and refresh them, you know. Um, also, if you have a bigger house, you can make even like a mock agility course, if agility is something that you like to do with your dog. Um, so training is a great way to keep that mental stimulation going on a regular basis. And lastly, depending on, you know, if your dog is friendly with other dogs or not, um, you can always have a dog play day if it's a rainy day. Have a friend over, have a family member over um, that has a dog and just let them play around with each other. It doesn't always have to be us stimulating them and you know that's great socialization too as well uh, if you have a small dog that's you know still getting used to other dogs too. So yeah so these are great ways to keep your dog busy when you're stuck inside or if you just want to mentally stimulate them in general. So I hope that they were helpful to you. Um, if you already do these things or if you have any suggestions for me that maybe I may have left out, um, leave those in the comments down below. I love learning new things to do with Zorro. I know he loves um, doing new things with me too, so I would love to hear those from you guys. And remember, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button below. Also, consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out when we make new videos. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week.